Goedemiddag, uh, good evening uh, from California. So I'm going to give actually a somewhat different perspective. I'm, uh, I would like to present a little bit the perspective of the technologist. Uh, so again, uh, you've heard it many times already, uh, the digitalization of society is going at full blast. The amount of digital data that's being generated is growing exponentially, and nothing says that it's going to change it. Bottom line is it is changing society. Um, if I can figure out how to move my screen, here we go. Um, it, uh, technology has been, uh, has a, a heavy footprint on society, as we all know, uh, and that has been happening for uh, quite a while, actually, if you think about way back into history. But more recently, the internet, followed by the web in the 1990s, cloud and mobiles in the 2000s, leading to IoT in 2010. And nowadays we're in the age of what I would call the internet of action. With it have come specific artifacts, right? So the internet basically was primarily uh, oriented towards increasing productivity. The web introduced the concept of social networking, interaction with each other, while the cloud basically was all about how we can collect huge amount of data and make sense of it leading ultimately to the artificial intelligence of today. The internet of action is, is gonna change it again. It's gonna see new paradigms emerging and they actually are emerging as we speak. They're actually changing every aspect of society as far as I can see. So, and it is intertwining with our human evolution. The technology itself determines how we as human change, adapt and, and, and move forward. And there's so many various aspects. Again, if you look at this internet of action, we see that it's gonna change the workplace, how we commute, how we interact. Obviously, it's already clear in this uh, corona times that how humans interact with each other, how they communicate, how they socialize, as, uh, is, is dramatically impacted by how technology can help them that. But ultimately, it leads even further. The interaction between autonomous entities and humans the capabilities of, of restoring function to people who have had severe illnesses, but ultimately changing the way we as humans interact with the world. All of that is impacted by technology. So the, the footprint is indeed extremely heavy and again, changes how we as humans move forward. If you look further down the road, uh, you might see this emergence of what I call the digital society, a world where Every aspect in the physical world is mirrored in the cyber world, as you know it, or vice versa. They basically are living together and interacting with each other. And again, I feel right now by looking at the screen and talking to you that I'm actually living in a virtual world. It has very little to do with my physical world where I operate in. Now, this is exciting as a technologist, obviously. It is something that is... is uh, unique, it's, um, uh, it's a unique uh, point in time, but at the same time you realize, and everybody realizes that this comes with many different artifacts. Every piece of technology ever introduced always had some good and some bad. And that's true, if you think way back from the invention, basically the, 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 from the introduction of the wheel to basically agriculture and things like that, Every time you see that something has a positive impact, also has some negative sides. And this is definitely true with technology. There's every single technology that we have created, people have figured out how to basically use it for the good, but also for the bad. For instance, uh, think about the environment and what we have been doing with the environment. The introduction of technologies every time has had an impact. But at the same time, we also can use technology to improve on society. And just some examples. Um, if you think about it, where can uh, today with the cyber physical world, we're introducing sensors and communication devices everywhere. And that's really good because um, definitely here in California with the fires we've had over the last years, having a clear insight of uh, air quality at various places at any point in time and be able to track that real time is very important. And so is the movement of the fires themselves. Traffic motion, basically crime tracking to distribute cameras. All of this is ultimately a good thing. 
But at the same time, that same technology can be used to suppress, to basically be anti-democratic, can basically be used in many different ways that uh, are basically are invading in our privacy, in our, our rights as a human, and so on and so forth. Here's another example, obviously very popular these days with the corona times is the concept of uh, uh, tracking of, um, of your health and uh, by per, uh, physical parameters. Uh, online test chips and basically the capability of tracking your own health, your respiration and things like that is amazing. But at the same time, if that data hands up and basically getting used in a variety of ways to basically impact how we live our lives, for instance, will this impact how we get insurance? Who will get uh, basically the corona vaccine? This type of things are indeed very so. Uh, same thing again about the Internet of Action, the capability. Oops, I think I got a crash here. Can we share the screen again? Um, seems like technologies don't always agree with each other. Uh, oh, we should be there in a second. Otherwise, I will have to talk it through. Okay, it's coming back. It says. I'm going to skip that slide. It's too dangerous. Um, but we already mentioned um, the possibility. There we go. Um, in the previous slide, I showed you the capability of restoring uh, basically function to a human that basically lost a limb by having indeed a direct interface into the brain. Now, again, this is potentially life saving. The impact of this is humongous to the last class of people. But at the same time, the autonomization and the capability of having autonomous entities and interfaces to the brain and things like that could have very bad repercussions if not basically managed correctly. So the good is there's tremendous opportunities. The bad things is indeed you can use this opportunity in the wrong way, as we see uh, very often happening today. But it's also the bad is that some of those technologies will be unreachable to many. So this is really the challenge we face as, uh, as a society. What we need to do is think about how we can maximize the good while minimizing the bad, while preserving the basic concept that were behind the internet. The internet was about open communication between people. And as was basically said by Peter Paul and Rini already before, it takes all. It is not one single a segment of society can help to tackle this particular problem. Digitalization of society and the positive way, making it maximizing of, of the good things is an important part for all of us. So uh, creators, innovators, technologists on one side, citizens and adopters have to work together. As Peter Paul was just saying, governments play an essential role and so do corporations. So it's an interplay of all of those. Now, uh, from a technologist perspective, if we basically think forward and creating the next generation devices, what should we think about? What are the key things we have to keep in mind? And so what I did in this report is I came up with a number of what I call design principles for a better, safer, fairer digital world. And again, a set of basic things that we should keep in mind once we create new technologies. And here they are in a very short summary. I don't have that much time. They're all in the report in more detail. But first of all, I think the most important thing that we need in a digital world is trust. And trust can only be built if you have strong and unambiguous authentication, that we know what the sources are of a piece of technology, the sources of a sensor, piece of data, uh, and any data we should have authentication. It can be anonymized. It actually, it's possible to do so, as some of those corona apps have basically shown. But it is important that we can trust the data. The second one is that it's ownership. If, if I create some data, it is mine. And it's only when I'm willing to give it up that basically it should be passed on. Today, we have the opposite picture. If you go medical data, financial data, anything, you basically look at uh, all that data is owned by the, 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 the owners of the businesses, 
the corporations and things like that. In a sense, to me, I believe I should always be owner of that data and I can give and or grant access to that data when needed. Really important. And again, uh, um, and uh, Peter Paul was giving the example of the Corona app that people want to share. That's okay. But ultimately, it is their decision to share it and with whom they share it. Not something that's imposed on us by a free service or something like that. Thirdly, everything should be open and transparent. You know, the idea of open software and hardware is absolutely essential. If from the time you have closed boxes, you have basically mysteries, you have misuse, you have basically uh, challenges. And that leads to the next one, actually. Openness and transparency also enable traceability and ultimately responsibility. Uh, any actor in the digital space should be responsible for what they do. We see this too many times right now with fake data and so on and so forth. People put things out without basically hiding the responsibility. Now, to make all of this work, obviously it requires that there's some rules of engagement. A autonomous car has a set of rules of behavior. A, uh, a, any entity that basically moves a wireless network and things like that, how it's being used and when it's going to be used, has basically requires a set of policy and these policies can change right the rules that play in normal times can change for instance when a uh, endemic basically or epi epidemic basically happens the rules could change and they have to be flexible changeable and so on and so forth and that leads actually to the next one is basically ethics are essential as well the device we're building should have built-in ethics especially if you think again about autonomous cars, robots, and so on and so forth. What these ethics rules are, we don't know yet, but this is why we need that engagement and the engagement, uh, continuing engagement between all parties. And finally, as uh, been stressed many, many times before, this is for everyone. So having capability, digital education to every single person on earth is really important. And it, it goes indeed across all disciplines. Today, let's say here on the Berkeley campus, we have a large initiative and, um, and basically a complete reorganization of some of our disciplines in what we call data science, where we see actually uh, technologists sitting together, people from the arts, people from sociology, psychology, uh, phys uh, physical sciences, and so on and so forth, coming together and working together um, in a common curricular setting. Um, that's just an example at the academic level but you can see this happening also at every branch of, of society, basically every age, every, every subgroup of society. So the bottom line here is I think we're at the cross point. And, and I think it's a very important cross point. This technology digitalization won't stop. It, it's going to move forward. You know that. Uh, and it has the potential for doing a major set of good, environmental, health, you name it. All of those things will be impacted. But if we don't do it right, it can also cause major harm. Can basically, as you already see right now, the misuse of technology can harm democracy, for instance, an example. I don't think uh, doing nothing and just going the way we always done it is not a viable option, but we cannot go backwards either. So solutions are available and can be envisioned, but again, it takes all and it will take bold steps. And I see, it was very encouraging to see some of the initiatives that are already happening in the last couple of years. One caveat, we are already late. Things are moving on, so we better keep moving and basically getting our act together soon. Thanks.